Organizations today have a diverse approach to applications and infrastructure, running workloads in the public cloud, in the private cloud, and at the edge. Now, this means that developers have different APIs and operators have different tools for management, monitoring, and security. And the problem is that these differences don't provide business value. In fact, they're detractors from helping developers and operators create new business value and new business applications. So to help reduce this complexity, we've added a layer of abstraction called multi-cloud services. So let's think about the history of abstraction. First, we had machine code, and now we have programming languages with compilers. We had compute hardware, and now we use hypervisors. And now we've gone from single cloud environments to use multi-cloud services. Our family of multi-cloud services, VMware cross-cloud services, provides these abstractions at several layers. Take VMware Cloud, for example. With just a few lines of code, you can deploy a complete enterprise-grade VMware infrastructure stack wherever you choose. And you can use vRealize Cloud Management to have the same operational model across all of your cloud deployments. I invite my colleagues, Francisco Hernandez and Matt Bradford to give us a quick demo. Thanks, Amanda. We're going to demonstrate now how we realize cloud management tools allow you to quickly add a new cloud environment and manage every VMware cloud you deploy from a single place. Okay, thank you to realize automation, abstraction capabilities of multi-cloud environments. I can go from one single word lock deployment on-prem to a multi-cloud VMware cloud deployment by easily adding a few lines of code. Uh, this will allow me to present to my consumer an easy way to access this cloud environment, hide the complexity, and just deploy the workloads they need wherever they need it. As you can see right here, I have multiple cloud environments uh, on Azure, on-prem, on AWS, and they all share the same capabilities, name conventions, day two actions, uh, lease policies, and, and so on. Now let's take a look into VRApps. All right, thanks, Francisco. VRealize Operations is available both as a SaaS offering or can be deployed on-prem. It includes native integrations for your on-prem, hybrid, or public cloud services and can be easily configured within minutes. vRealize Operations will help your teams get the most out of your multi-cloud environments through activities such as right-sizing virtual machines, reclaiming wasted resources by cleaning up snapshots, and removing powered-off or idle virtual machines. You can even automate these tasks through Automation Central. Plus, you'll get valuable insights into the costs of your various clouds. You'll get a detailed breakdown of the costs of your services and infrastructure, as well as areas where you could potentially be saving money. VRealize Operations helps your teams cut through the noise with powerful alerting and troubleshooting capabilities, such as the troubleshooting workbench for infrastructure and cloud services alike. By automatically identifying anomalies and potential root cause, plus integration with vRealize Log Insight and Log Insight Cloud, your teams will spend less time troubleshooting, all from within a single interface. And now, back to Amanda. This is great when you need a secure, resilient, enterprise-grade, pre-assembled stack deployed in the public cloud, private cloud, or at the edge. And when you use the full capacity of VMware Cloud, it's actually less expensive than native public cloud services to run your apps. Now, when you have cloud native applications or refactored applications, you might be using one or more public cloud Kubernetes services such as AKS, EKS, or GKE. Or you might be running your container-based workloads in Tanzu Kubernetes Grid or in OpenShift. Our cross-cloud service, Tanzu Mission Control, provides a single interface to be able to deploy manage and secure conformant Kubernetes services in any environment. So this way you can quickly use Kubernetes services without having to learn the intricacies of each because Tanzu abstracts away this complexity. Finally, applications running on Kubernetes have APIs, microservices, and data that connect at runtime. And every connection is a potential point of risk. So Tanzu Service Mesh protects and connects your applications through fine-tuned authorization and encryption. So your microservices are securely connected across clouds and your data is encrypted in transit. To show us how this works, I invite my colleague Baski Sabla to give us a quick demo. Thank you, Amanda. 
As you can see, I'm in Transformation Control, which is a great place to create new clusters on any given cloud provider or attach existing Kubernetes clusters. Today, I have a Google Kubernetes Engine cluster that I'm going to attach and bring under the management of Transformation Control. So here is my GKE cluster. I'm calling it GKE VMware Cross Cloud. And what I want to do is bring it under the management of Transformation Control. To do so, it's pretty simple. All I have to do is click on Attach Cluster, give the cluster a name, provide a cluster group to that, uh, where that cluster will be part of, click Next. And Transformation Control will give me an agent to install. All I do is copy that agent, kubectl command, and paste it in my GKE engine Kubernetes cluster. This is a very quick step. And once this goes through, the agent talks back to transmission control. And you'll see that the new Google Kubernetes engine cluster has successfully connected. Once it's connected, I can manage this cluster from transmission control without having to get into any other cloud console. This GKE cluster under transmission control, I can simply manage it at Thunder Service Mesh to this GKE cluster from TMC with a click of a button. All I have to do is click Add. And Thunder Service Mesh and all its component will quickly be installed within the GKE cluster. Now, once Tanzu Service Mesh components start getting installed, Service Mesh is going to go ahead. It is going to analyze all the services, all the microservices, APIs that are deployed within that cluster, and it will show you a service level graph of everything we have. I'm right now installing an Acme Fitness app that is going to have multiple microservices. And once this application is deployed in my GKE cluster, you'll see that in Tanzu Service Mesh, it is automatically going to detect all these services. Now, within Tanzu Service Mesh, our cluster is already attached, and I can create a global namespace. A global namespace is nothing but a logical construct of all the microservices that are applicable to a given application. Now, these microservices can be in a single cluster, or they could be a cross-cluster. A global namespace gives me the ability to define security policies, central certificate management, etc. Here, I'm creating an Acme Fitness uh, group called Global Namespace. I'm going to give it the domain where all my microservices are registered. Once that is done, I can select the cluster from which I want to incorporate microservices. So I'm going to select my GKE cluster and then select the namespace in which I want to gather all the services. Tanzu Service Mesh automatically detects all the microservices that were part of that cluster and namespace. Once the global namespace has been defined, it creates a security boundary around all these microservices. The global namespace creates automated certificate management for that domain, and it will create mutual TLS-based encryption across all these different services. A global namespace can also be defined on applications that span across multiple clouds. For example, in this scenario, we have the same Acme Fitness app deployed across two Kubernetes cluster and a global namespace that spans multiple clusters. You can see the shopping cart app was deployed on a vSphere cluster and the catalog application was deployed on an AWS cluster. All the microservices are talking across these different cloud provider environments and the global namespace is ensuring certificate management, security, and mutual TLS encryption across all these services. This was a quick overview of Tundra Service Mesh and Mission Control. Back to you, Amanda. Each of these cross-cloud services abstract complexity from your multi-cloud architectures for traditional and modern applications. So you can run your apps where you choose while improving developer experience and simplifying your operations.